in order to see something in our life, we need to believe. If you don't believe, for example, if you don't believe in yourself, it's hard to see yourself moving forward, isn't it? It all begins with us believing something about us. And so today I want to share with you a message called believe, to believe, to believe. How do I believe? When times are hard, how do I believe in God still? When things are difficult, how do I believe in God in that situation? How do we do this? And let's learn from a quick story from the book of John, chapter 11. It's a long reading, but we will share the message from there about belief. Um, this was a story about Lazarus, uh, a dear friend of Jesus. All right, so Luke chapter 11. You guys will see it at the back. I will read it from here. They should be on the projector. Um, so John chapter 11, sorry, John chapter 11 from verse 1. It says, now a certain man was sick. Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant of oil and whipped, I mean, wiped his feet with hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, the sister said, sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. Then Jesus heard that. He said, this sickness is not unto death. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. The same situation you may have right now. This situation here right now, it begins by saying, this sickness is not unto death. Maybe you're going through a problem and the Bible is saying that that situation is not going to be like your end. So it's not your end. Whatever you may be stuck in right now, it's not your end. The same way Lazarus' death is not unto death completely. So, and it says, verse 5, now Jesus loved Martha. And her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that it was sick, he was sick. He stayed two more days in the place where he was. Can you imagine? You, Jesus, you're telling Jesus, hey, my sister is, my brother is dead. And now you're telling me that you don't want to go, my bro- you want to stay for two more days? How horrible is that? Jesus is a lover, right? Jesus loves us, but he, he delays the time of his arrival to rescue Jesus. That means sometime when there is a delay in your life, it's a setup for a miracle. Whenever there is a delay in your life, it's a setup for a, a comeback. It's a setup for a breakthrough. Whenever you feel things are not working out, God is setting up something better. He's setting up something better. So don't look at the, your frustration in life, the thing, this is the end. No, there is a setup. Jesus is setting up something. And so today, you have to learn that whenever there's a problem, there's a setup. And it's a setup for miracle. Verse 5, verse 6 says, no, 7. Then after he, this, he said to the disciple, let us go to Judah again, to Judea again. The disciple said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, verse 9, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the light, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Sometime when we think the thing is dead in our life, Jesus is saying, look, I'm about to do something. I'm about to do something. Don't, don't just say, it, it's not dead. Your situation is not dead. It's not the end. Jesus is making something. Verse, uh, verse 10. Where was I? Verse 12. Then, he, then his disciple said, Lord, if he sleep, he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of this death, but they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Verse 14, then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Verse 15, and I am glad for your sake that I was not there, that you may what? Come on, you may what? Believe. So here, basically, Jesus was setting up that whenever you are in trouble, whenever there's something happening bad in your life, I'm setting up. There may be a delayment, but I am delaying for a reason so that you may believe that I'm going to bring a result. But when there is no belief, there is not going to be a result. 
Because Jesus is only going to walk through your stagnation, through your problem when you can believe. When you don't believe, then the miracle cannot come. So Jesus now came to the, the Martha and, and, uh, and, and Mary uh, telling Jesus about his brother Lazarus' death. But Jesus wanted them to come to a place of believing so that their brother can raise from the dead. So that means you have to have belief. Where there is a belief, there is a result coming. Verse 16. Then Thomas, who, 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 who's this guy again? Come on. You guys remember this guy from last week. Who was what? He was the doubter. This guy, the doubter. So Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciple, let us also go that we may die with him. I like him. He, he's courageous here, isn't it? He's courageous here. Jesus, let's go now. He's no longer doubting. He's now ready to die with Jesus. You know? And he thinks dying is cool. So he's willing to go and die. Verse 17. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb for how many days? Four days. Sometimes we think God is delaying us for a very long time. When are you going to bring that husband? When are you going to bring that boy, man? Or, you know, you were always thinking delay, delay. But every delay is a miracle waiting to happen. Every delay is a miracle waiting to happen. But are you going to believe the one that is willing to bring that to you? This is the question for today. Are you willing to believe? Verse 18. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews and had joined the woman around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. I like this. Martha already was activated in faith, but she needed her sister also to be activated in faith. You know, sometimes we need friends in our life that can believe with us. You know, sometimes you tell a situation to somebody, ah, God cannot do this. You, you, you need someone who can say, no, 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 no. Please just stop talking like that. I don't want doubters right now. Sometimes you need to shut those who doubt or speak negative things in your life. Sometimes tell them, please, I don't want your opinion. But Jesus is saying that the only way, if you're going to act in belief, you've got to stay away from those who don't believe as well. And Martha, in this case, wanted her sister. She wanted an extra faith. You know, when you have extra faith, it pushes you forward, doesn't it? So in this moment, she wanted her faith or belief to increase. And so she went to the sister. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, verse 21, Lord, if you had had been here, my brothers would have not died. I like this response. She really believed. She really believed that Jesus loved Lazarus so much and Jesus would do something. But Jesus wanted to take, now, Jesus already won over who? Mary. Mary is already activated, but Martha is not activated in faith yet or in belief. So now Jesus is saying to Martha to, to, Martha, to respond to Martha and say, Martha, no, no, no. You think I delayed? No, it's not a delay. Verse 22. But even now, come on, say now, even now. But now Jesus is saying, to, uh, sorry, this is now Martha responding to the sister. Sometimes you got to tell your friend, please shut up. I still believe God is able to do something. Sometimes I just need, if you believe for a car, for God, for this next year, then believe it. If someone said, nah, you don't have a job, how are you going to get a car? Shut up, please. But even now, you need to begin to say, even now, I may not have a job, it's going to come. You know what I mean? This is what the, the response of, of Mary to Martha. It says, but even now, that whatever you ask God, God will give you. So this is Martha telling Jesus, Jesus, I know, I know, even now, he may made, he made have stayed in the tomb for four days. I don't care, but I know if you ask anything from God, God will answer me. So that means our faith or our belief must be in Jesus. And we know if Jesus is in, in the town, when Jesus is in our life, there is going to be a result. There's going to be a result. And this push Jesus. Belief forces Jesus to do something. And I want you to hear Jesus respond. Verse 23. Jesus said to her, 
your brother will rise again. Because she believes that even now, she calls you activated her faith. And because she activated her faith, Jesus said, I'm going to bring a result for you. Martha said, verse 24, to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection as the last, at the last day. Sometimes, you know, we think God will bring it according to the timing that we want. And Martha thought it was according to the timing of Jesus coming from the dead. So sometimes we believe that when God, we believe in Jesus, we want it to come in our time. Isn't that? Please bring it this year. But Jesus said, I'm going to surprise you. I'm going to surprise you. Sometimes God will always bring something not off time, but it's in time or on time. Not in our time, but it's on his time. But it takes faith to believe or to have belief. So causes Jesus to be on time. If you want God to be on time for your life, you have to believe. Not according to your time, but according to his time. According to his time. Verse 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live what? Again. Or he shall live. Verse 26. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So the question that Jesus is asking you today, do you believe in me that I'm able to do whatever that you're struggling from? Do you believe? This is the question that Jesus is now asking to you today. Do you believe he can come through for you? Do you believe? Because if you can believe, then you have activated Jesus to do something. Now what is believe? To believe is to rest on the integrity of the one who tells you to believe. Now, it means that I have the integrity because Jesus has the integrity. I can rest on his integrity, not on my integrity. I can rest on his integrity. And to rest is to have confident expectation of good that whatever that person's integrity is, he will bring it to pass. Now, when you go to the doctor, many of us are exercising faith, aren't we? We're exercising belief. If I go to the doctor, the doctor will diagnose my problem and will give me the right pill and the right situation. And by the end of that, that, that appointment with the doctor, I know I'm coming with a result. Do you know that we're already acting in belief by going to the doctor? We're activating belief. And why do you go to the doctor? You have the integrity that you have this, the, the doctor has given or proven himself that he has this integrity to provide the answer for the thing that you want, isn't it? So you have to rest. So to believe is to rest on the integrity of that person. And so Martha and Mary have now seen the integrity of God, Jesus, and then they are willing to rest. Verse 28, and when she, she had said these things, is that right? 27, she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Verse 28, and when she had said these things, she went away secretly, called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come into the, into the town. This thing was all happening before even they met Jesus. The conversation was happening. So sometime before we meet Jesus, we should be fully prepared with our belief. But if you've not fully prepared, then you cannot present your request, isn't it? You've got to come fully prepared. Believe that God is able to do these things in your life. Come fully prepared. When you go to the doctor, you're fully prepared that whatever the doctor says, I will obey. Isn't that? So you need to, pre op to prepare yourself. And how do you prepare? By believing. You're believing is your preparation to receive from Jesus. Verse 31, is that? Or verse 30. Now Jesus had not yet come into town, into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Verse 31. Then the Jews who were with him in the house, comforting her, when they saw all that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, she is going to the tomb to to weep there. Then when 
Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not, I would not have died. Therefore, verse 33, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. You see, when you have faith or believe in Jesus, Jesus is going to be ready to activate and release something to you. And so the Bible said that Jesus was groaning in the spirit, willing to release something because he saw faith coming to these two sisters. When you have believed, you force Jesus to move. You force Jesus to move. And Jesus is willing to do something because there's a belief. Verse where are we? Verse 34? 35. It says, Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him? Just notice, if Jesus loves you, he's moved with compassion so much. But his compassion can only be actualized when your belief is activated. If these two, even Jesus loved Lazarus and everybody. But if they do not activate, regardless of it, they cannot release. Jesus could not release the healing. Jesus no, could not release the situation. So yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, he cares for you. Yes, he understands the situation. But if there is no belief, there is no Jesus walking in you in that situation. Verse 37. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying. So there's some time we question that, oh, Jesus, if you did it for brother so, sister so, why are you taking so long? Why are you taking so long? Why can't you do it for me too? This was the, the question the Pharisees were saying. They're trying to what? They're trying to take Mary and Martha from faith. Trying to say, this Jesus is just lying to you. He, said, he could have done it. Why does he have to wait for four days? He could have done it from that time. Didn't he open the eyes of the blind? Sometimes we like saying, you know, my sister, you know, you're, you're with your sister and, or your friend, your best friend. Your best friend gets married before you and then you begin to get jealous about it. You know, but how come that God of, of the person came but not my God? What's wrong? Are we not serving the same God? That is trying to discourage you. But your, your, your belief should not be based on what someone else has happened to. Your belief should be on God and on his timing. Verse 38 then Jesus, again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb because Martha passed doubt and Mary, Jesus was still activated. You see, when you push your doubt, then belief can happen. You got to push your doubt. If there is any doubt that you have in your life, push it. Push Thomas away. Push Thomas away. Push all the doubting away. And the more you push doubt away, the more then you are activating Jesus. Jesus was groaning in the spirit, willing to do something. But you got to push doubt. Do you know that God cannot push doubt out of you? It's only you can push the doubt. Because he gave his integrity. He gave his word. And he's proven that he has a power, the ability to bring what you need. But you got to push what? Your doubt. You got to push your doubt. Whatever doubt that you may have, push it away. Verse 39. Jesus said, take away the stone, Martha. Now Jesus is willing to perform the miracle. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench. For he has been dead for what? Four days. Now Jesus is saying, I don't care. No matter how bad your situation may be, how rotten it may be, what people have spoken bad about your situation, what you think your situation is, how bad it is, it may sting to society, it may sting to people, but I am willing to roll away that situation. That's what Jesus said, I'm willing to roll away. Don't worry about how bad it is, what people have said about you, what the situation may be. You may have been staying in that house for many years. You may be staying in, in that sickness for many years, but Jesus said, I don't care. I'm willing to move it away. I'm willing to move it away. But are you going to believe that he's going to move it away? And I love Jesus. He does not care what people say and what people do. 
He doesn't care whether the weather is going to be a problem. He doesn't care whether the ground, he doesn't care whether it's a dead person. He, his job is to bring his word to life. But you have to believe. Verse 40. Jesus said to her, did I not say that, uh, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would what? See the glory. That means the result is coming. Or whatever you have believed in me, the result will come. But I need you to believe. Come on, believe. And if you believe, the glory can come. Meaning the result can come. The manifestation can come. Verse, 30, verse 41. We're reading until verse 44. Then they took away the stone from the place where, he, where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Did, isn't that what Ma Mary was saying before? Jesus, I know if you pray to God, God will answer you, isn't it? Now Jesus is proving, they said, yes, because I cannot give you anything with, without the Father. So all our prayers is to the Father, but through Jesus. Meaning Jesus is the only way whom we believe. And as we believe in Jesus, it is job of Jesus to release whatever the Father has for us. And that's awesome news. Verse 42, and I know that you are always, you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I stand this, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Verse 43, now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. He's telling you your situation, come out. Your barrenness, come out. Your delay, come out. Whatever the situation, come out. Jesus is commanding. Jesus always commands something. But are we going to believe? If we believe, then he can command. Verse, the last verse. And he who had died came out. <laughs> that means your miracle has arrived. Your situation has arrived. Jesus will roll away. The Bible says here, and he who had died came out bound hand and foot with Graves closed, and his face was wrapped up, I mean wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Whatever the situation in your life, Jesus is willing to loose it and to let it go. It's about to, but are you going to believe? Are you going to believe? So what is belief again? Let's go back to the definition of belief. Belief is resting on the integrity of God. Belief is the function of the heart. So when you, it's a function of the heart, meaning belief operates from your heart. Because we talked about it last week that in Ephesians chapter uh, 2 verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding is your heart. So meaning your belief is a function of your heart. Wherever your heart is, that's where you believe from. All that you believe comes from the heart. And what do you believe in your heart? What happens in your heart? What happens in your heart? A persuasion, something called persuasion. We all know this thing. Sometimes girls call it a butterfly, isn't it? When you fall in love, you feel like a butterfly going in through, through you. But it's a persuasion. In, in, a, in, in, in another word, it's a persuasion. Something persuaded you. What did you call it? <laughs> yeah. So something happens inside you, a persuasion. So belief is a persuasion that happens within your heart. God tells you about himself. And when you're persuaded, you respond to that thing that you're persuaded about. So when we believe that Jesus is able to do whatever we need, there's a persuasion in our heart. And when that persuasion takes place, there's an action that's willing to believe in the person. So to believe is to stand firm on what God has said. To believe is to stand firm in Him. To believe is to be certain about what God is going to do in your life. Is to be certain. To believe is to trust in and to rely upon God. To believe is to trust and to rely upon God. That's what it is to believe. Martha and Mary embodied this. They really explained this. That they believed Jesus was able to rise their brother from the dead. So that means they had trust in and they relied upon God. To believe is to have a confident assurance in God. Meaning that if God said it, it shall be so. There's a confident expectation or there's a confidence assurance. You are sure there's an assurance inside you. Last one, to believe is to be persuaded 
by that truth of the person. To be what? Persuaded. And I think many of us understand the word persuasion. I don't have to tell you. Just look at what happens in your heart. When, there is a, when, you're, you're, when you're threatened by something, what happens? When you're scared of something, what happens? There's a shock that happens. You're persuaded. For example, I think uh, many ladies, when they see a spider, some signal goes into them. And they are shocked and they're persuaded. They become so defensive. They run away. They find escape. Because an information came in. And that information is that spider is a bad person. And that spider is going to destroy me. So I am going to right now find a shelter of comfort. That is a persuasion because you see that thing as a what? A problem. It's a truth. It should do an activation the same way that spider does to you. What about uh, people who are afraid, right? We're afraid sometimes, right? The same reaction happens when you're afraid, when you see something. You're afraid and there's a reaction that takes place inside you. And all of a sudden you want to do things. It's a persuasion. <laughs> it's a persuasion in your heart. You are already acting, but you're acting in fear. <laughs> you're, already act, you're already believing, but you're believing in fear. You're already believing in something that appeared to be truth, but it's not truth. But it's truth to you in a way because it's a harmful to you. Does that make sense? So we need to begin to substitute our fears of darkness to faith in God. In his word. In what he has said. So that the situation that we have in our life, God can come through. God can come through. So, as I conclude, and we're going to be praying, I don't know what you may be struggling from. And I may not know what you've been praying in the secret place. God, show up in my life. I don't know. And I don't know what delay may, may have been in your life. But all I'm saying is this. You can be like Martha and Mary and say, because there is Jesus who loves me and loves my brother, he can come to my rescue. So today there is a Jesus who loves you and he knows the situation that you're going through and he's willing to come through for you. He's willing to lose the situation. He's willing to bring a miracle. But are you going to believe? Jesus says, do you believe this? And the question to me, to you, is that do you believe this?